And everybody, we are back again. Can't stop, won't stop for probably at least another few days. I got streams planned, so we're going to keep going. We're going to keep doing this thing, this uh, whole streaming crypto, real DeFi type of deal. It's going to continue uh, until into uh, the the beatings will continue until further notice. Uh, I guess that's one, one way you can interpret as well. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the show. I don't I don't feel beat though. I don't feel beat beat or beat up or anything like that. I feel pretty good actually. A little. Uh, I've been just crazy into like AI stuff right now and I'm going down that rabbit hole. So next week, if you're subscribed to the channel, you may have seen me post already um, book five different slots. Next week is AI week, AI and crypto week. And I got a lot of cool stuff to share. So I'm excited for that. So uh, yeah, been bouncing around today, back and forth, uh, taking care of a few errands and stuff and enjoying real life, which is the best. Right. Um, and then I was excited to have coffee on for, this is hex on effect number five. If you haven't seen the previous four, really good um I've had johnny chaos i've had uh, rg3 whales uh I'm trying to think who else i had somebody else on there too but really great playlist um just to get into the spirit of hexco understand why the people who are here are here and have been here for a long time and uh refuse to lose and uh, only consider themselves winning uh whatever the case may be where the price be up and down so thought who who better else to have on for the series that i haven't done for a while than uh, crypto coffee. So I think he's got, uh, he's been around for a while. He knows what's up and uh, dude's inspirational to me a lot too. I'm like, oh man, coffee made, he's, he's like always killing on the videos and streaming and uh, content creation and just going after and trying to make things better. Like literally, like, again, take more than he, he receives, right? Like, I think that's a, that's the spirit I want to cultivate too, around here too. It's like giving, giving more than you take, like at least for a, a period of time. So at least then, you know, hopefully at the end you can reap your rewards and stuff. But I think paying it forward without counting, uh, great Naval quote, um, is uh, it's a great way to go about it. And I think if more of us can do that in the community, the better. Make this place, keep this place, the greatest place on earth. Uh, keep, it's like, keep, keep Hex great. Always. I got to work on the slogan though. Got to keep it on. Anyways, without further ado, this guy loves Hex so much, he refuses to... You refuse to urinate in any hexagon shaped urinal cakes because he's afraid of what it might, ha might happen. Welcome back to the show, Co Crypto Coffee. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, we're still out here surviving. <clears throat> it's been we're four thriving. long years, 90% drop. Uh, just hope everyone's been buying the dip. Still waiting on the future to unfold. You know, there's a lot of good things happening, a lot of good people building stuff. And uh, yeah, try not to get sad at all the Solana and base meme coins that you're missing out on. And if you want to go play, go ahead, right? Yeah. But um, <clears throat> you know, there's a glass it. half full, glass half empty approach. And compared to Bitcoin, right? If you bought the dip on Pulse Chain, or you know, Pulse Chain has done about a four x, just kind of like Bitcoin has done about a four or five x. So it's not, we're not that bad. I still believe that our pump is yet to come. So I still believe that uh, you know, maybe with founder buybacks as one component, but also with the community as Tons of other <clears throat> awesome people building and promoting and spreading the message, more fiat on ramps and more marketing. Um, it's going to pump us, whether it's you know sooner or later in this cycle, the money does flow into different, different coins at different times, different narratives cycle in and out. And we're obviously in meme coin mania right now. Just look at Solana and look at base. That's all anyone wants to talk about. Uh, we've got our own meme coins on Pulse Chain, which I tried to make a video yesterday to potentially siphon some of that meme coin <clears throat> energy. And it got like the least views out of all my videos. <laughs> so I guess nobody uh, nobody cares, it's kind of off brand. So maybe everyone just doesn't actually care as much about meme coins as we think, at least in the Pulse Chain community. Dude, that's a great, I mean, just, <laughs> just on the point of you making, trying to make content again, to bring people and show them what we have, bring them people, you know, bring them into from where they are and Hey, there, we got stuff over there. If you like meme coin stuff, there's on pulse chain, but also we have other products and we have this whole ecosystem and we have this community making, even though, you know, you may not get the most amount of views, just being able to try and experiment. I mean, I still remember when you did the, um, you went to the, like the grocery store and was like giving people crypto, right? You were, I think you were giving them hex or, or giving them something. And just, oh, just, just going buying their groceries for them, or yeah, buying the groceries out. That, that's what it was. But I remember that I was like, man, that is that is cool. First of all, that they even come up with the idea deal to do it, and then once you have it, like ideals are cheap right now. You got to execute. You got to like figure out how to do it. Where does it make sense? Are you going to get punched in the face? All these things you got to consider, and then you go do it, film it, 
produce it, put it out there. And in hopes that whatever you're creating is going to like entertain or inform people and bring them into, you know, again, what, what, uh, what you would probably consider the, you know, this, this great ecosystem of what we've been living in Hexaco for a while. Man. So like those kind of things are very underrated. And again, all the stuff that you're doing out there and a lot of other people are doing in these niche areas, trying new stuff out. I, I hope at least if, even if a small percentage of them are successful, if not, Maybe maybe you had a good time doing it. Maybe it's fun, anyways. I think I think a lot of goodwill goes comes out of it too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not always fun to you know experiment and have your stuff be not received uh, well. But you just got to throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. That's what you do as well. That's what a lot of us do. You know, I talk about like an exchange listing, and everyone gets all, oh, it does say sexes are bad though, and it's like, yeah, but we haven't had one. What if we did have one? What if we just had one? Just for a relatively low cost compared to a lot of sacrifice uh, money that's been floating around there. I understand that they're bad. And a lot of people, a lot of people can see the nuance as well. And not everything needs to be a, a giant crusade of an ideological hill to die on. But, you know, we don't, we absolutely don't need centralized exchanges. We might, we might want to try one, see what it is, see what it's like uh, for legitimacy, or even just think of it as a marketing like a digital billboard where 3 million people are already trading. Um, if anything, maybe we can make tutorials later on of how to take your coins off of said centralized exchange, right? We all know that they're bad, but uh, that's just one of many things people are trying. You've built a whole website called GoRealDeFi.com, which luckily you're keeping up to date with. We're lucky to have someone like you to actually care to update the website every time PulseX has an update. But people that don't know, go real DeFi dot com everyone probably knows it's a website with right e easy buttons it's the easy button for all the apps in crypto so that you don't have to click on that big scary ipfs link and as much as we joke around about that i do hear people say i have had people ask me hey uh is it okay to click this ipfs link i don't know what it does and they're actually smart for saying that because they, it means that they don't just want to click on random stuff but it is uh it's a new concept to go launch something on IPFS. So you're making it easy by, they don't even have to know, but if they use your website here, they are using IPFS links and you do have to keep them up to date, which you do, but. Um, well, just a small correction. I don't do anything, sir. I have, I have the robots do it. Uh, every Literally in the background, like I don't, all this stuff, like if you look at the hashes and the versions, every time there's an update, I see it on Twitter. And then I go check this and I say, oh yeah, the script running in the background, it picked up from the official sources and it updated everything. And now everything's up to date. So it's not even me. Like, I literally don't even have to touch the website. As long as I keep paying the bills at this point, um, you know, it's going to keep going and it's going to be automatically updated unless the devs change something on the back end. So yeah, just, just small correction. I don't, I don't do anything. I don't want to awesome. do anything else. Right. That's, I didn't even realize I, auto, automation is pretty great. And uh, that's a sign of a, you're a pretty, pretty well-versed developer, it seems, or at least, you know, you uh you had some time to consider that <clears throat> in my world in, in big tech it's like i would not be a developer in in you know the in the real world for example i don't know i guess i can't be now with ai and all the crazy stuff that's getting enabled since i have the background um but i, I can code i tell people that I can, I can code i guess in this community i'm a dev of, of some sort i just don't make tokens or, or stuff like that um but yeah it, anyways my world i'm just like a security guy who who codes from time to time uh, but i'm happy to share my have you share my skills and let them translate here? Um, but I wanted to yeah, no, I pre always appreciate the shout out with Go Real DeFi. You, Somi talks a lot about it too. And um, and just just to this comment, you know, somebody asking about your uh, new farming video. I just before the stream, I saw it and I added it to Learn to Earn under slash farming. You click there, and I'll probably uh, push it up here a little bit higher too. But at the end, thirty nine minutes ago, Coffee released it. Boom, and then he jumps on stream beforehand. I add it to the playlist, and now. You want to go to farming? You want to learn about farming? You can see coffee's videos. You can see stuff from my channel. Uh, I think I got, yeah, somebody's got a video on there too. Um, so yeah, this it's, it's becoming more than, I never thought I would, I always thought, okay, maybe I would add something else and, and make it a little bit more like, like what is valuable, right? Like what else can I add to this to make it valuable, but still clean and not cluttered and, and like people, you know, easy to index. And besides the official apps, it is my go-to place for when I want to share a playlist or go, you know, go revisit a topic myself. I go to learn to earn and I go click on farming or staking or hex or pulse X or making money or onboarding onboarding guide to, that I share with everyone. You want to be onboarded? Like I've got a whole playlist. I produce a whole playlist of stuff among, you know, a lot of the people community have too, but um, 
this has become my my favorite place to go outside of gopulse.com. Yeah, that onboarding playlist is great. I've heard good reviews of it as well. Some people that, you know, were more novices at crypto, they've actually gone through the playlist, taken it, and they said they really liked it. So if you feel like a noob out there, don't be shy to ask. We understand there's always new people coming in, or even if you've been around for a long time, there's still a lot of people that are just kind of like fans, but they haven't really gotten their feet dirty yet. Hands dirty. <laughs> That's the saying. Um, so, uh, so yeah, get, get in there and don't be afraid to experiment because with a lot of, with PulseX um, and hacks, you can now experiment with like $20 worth because you don't have to worry about gas fees eating your whole bag on pulse chain. Um, a word of maybe some advice. I know I was the one that uh, even suggested putting the Ethereum DEX on go real DeFi. I don't know if we want to remove that now at this point so that people don't even get confused between the two. But I've, you know, I've thought about it. I've thought about what to do. I think I'm still going to let things settle a little bit with it because I still think there's some utility too because it still has the pulls for ETH. I don't know. I, I guess that's a good question. Though. Like, what do you? What is the case? Well, now with the bridge it? buddy bot, like I don't think anybody as a first timer should need to to buy wrapped pulse and Bridget. So that takes that whole overcomplicated step off, which I remember that was the reason we added it or, you know, I suggested that before. Right. But um, in this particular case, now that we've matured a lot and Richard's made it very clear, like focused, concentrated economic energy into Pulse Chain. Pulse Chain is, is the way like use the bridge and just buy everything you need on Pulse X. So I don't know. I think as a noob, if they don't need to know that there's two ch exchanges on two different chains, they they don't really yeah, it, it, might, it might be more confusing there's certainly a point for and against it i yeah i'm going to think about it a little bit but i think if i go back to like why i made the website in the first place of course you know to get people to to the to to the the different place they need to go but also these are the six decentralized apps that pulse chain devs have made like ethex is is one of them and and they can't even funny enough they can't even abandon it they can't even stop you know it's, it's launched on ipfs uh, F, ipfs and i don't know i think the, giving people access to the liquidity pools through a decentralized way it almost feels like a good backup if nothing else so if i did if i did rearrange it a little bit i still feel like i would put it somewhere but just because it, it is one of the d60 decentralized apps um and i'm not sure i don't know i don't know maybe there's a yeah, I think it, I think it's still early to be like, I don't know, I don't know. I haven't I haven't thought too much about it. I have other things on the on the list of uh, stuff to think about lately. But that's a good point. How much how much liquidity is going to be used and maintained, and how useful is it for noobs? How useful versus confusing is it for it to be there? I mean, I think I've tried to denote it a little bit with exchange versus exchange ETH, but. I guess, yeah, if you're a noob, what does that mean to you in the first place? I know we would we know what it means, but what does it mean to new people? It's, it's a trade-off. It is. Like, how do you... Which yeah, exchange is which? I'm a new user coming in. Why are there two exchanges? Which one's yep. the right one? That's a good it's, point. You know, they're very right. simple. Like, it's very simple. One track mind for a new person. But hey, yeah. I, uh, I'm i retracting my earlier argument, you know, but only because the the, the onboarding process has changed. You used to have to buy WPLS. So think about improvements in the ecosystem, right? You used to have to actually buy wrapped pulse on Ethereum. That was terrible. The bridge buddy bot is excellent. So well, I, th I think the original, or at least what I used the ETH exchange or ETH for before was for just buying EHEX from the liquidity pools, even though most of it I would buy on PulseX anyways. So I guess the question is what do people use the Uniswap pools on ETH for? Now, whether it's you know Alex's fork or whether it's eth ethex.com decentralized app, are they still using it to buy hex to bridge over? I don't know. I guess maybe I think I the main even... messaging from Richard is don't why why waste any more gas on the Ethereum side at all? Bridge all your hedron, bridge all your icosa, bridge all your ehex as soon as you get it into the cheaper, faster, better ecosystem. If you want to liquidity bond it to an existing core coin. To maybe hitch it along for the ride like i've been doing with ehex um then do that that's a better strategy than having to pay 20 bucks every time you you try to do anything and so far yeah. i think users have paid what 30 million dollars in gas fees total in hex, well, hex you, alone. yeah i mean i do think ethex or ethereum hex hex class whatever you want to call it at this point is going to be more pulled staking and it'll be, be less 
usage in that way. But I, I don't know. I think also, you know, Richard says a lot of things too. Richard is kind of suspicious over centralized exchanges at this point. The community does what it want in, in different directions on that too. So I don't know. I, um, I think, you know, one way I could do this in a data driven approach, I could maybe I'll, I'll check to see if I can count which links are clicked the most. Like obviously the exchange is going to have a lot, uh, bridge is going to have a lot hex, maybe hex app too. And I wonder if like, it, is anyone clicking the exchange link? And if like it's got single digits, maybe that's enough data to be like, oh, I'm going to heavily deprioritize or I'm going to move it. or I'm going to, you know, do something with it. But if, Check the what if I see a lot of people clicking on it. Yeah. I don't know. It's a different question then, I guess. Data-based decision-making, data-driven. Yeah. No, good nuance though. Always, always appreciate the, the feedback and otherwise, dude. Let's get into it, man. Hex unaffected. Um, we got you know plenty to talk about with eHex and PX and stuff too, a little bit later on. But for those who haven't heard from you, I've heard maybe a couple of times you, you tell the story on different shows and stuff. But how did you get into this crazy mess, man? How did you how did you get into Hex? I, I, I saw some old Discord Syndicate videos with you and RG3 and a few people on it before too. But how did you get into this, man? Yeah, uh, I was one of the first people to ever make a Hex video after Serena Alonzi. Um, shout out Serena. Uh, she, she, I think technically made the first one, but I was just in the chat rooms and I'd been in crypto for four or five years prior to Hex's existence. And I just liked what Richard had to say. I bought his messaging and I said, wow, if this really does what he thinks it can do, um, I'm going in pretty heavy. So I went, went in with maybe half my bag and then over time I gradually scaled in more. Um, but I also wanted to take an active role in marketing and promoting it because I started to see Richard or... Yeah, Richard himself was getting slandered and uh, basically talked down on by all of mainstream crypto. And here I was thinking that it's actually a pretty solid idea. Like, why don't you give the guy a chance? Um, a lot of it was Bitcoin Maxi backlash, I think, because he was a Bitcoin Maxi and he changed his mind and people just couldn't handle that. And he was also a little rough around the edges. So I think he uh, offended a lot of like more of the softy type of people in crypto that are kind of just the you know the pencil neck kind of guys that that just get angry you know because i don't know maybe maybe they were bullied in the past and he reminded them of his their bully or something i don't know i don't know what it was but soy yeah all that people just yeah people didn't like his style i appreciated his bluntness even though yeah it's, it's not like he's a freaking god and not, not not perfect in his delivery all the time but i appreciated how honest he was about everything um so yeah, I, I figured I had to try to defend my bag because everybody was, they were making false accusations, really. They were just like framing things in the worst possible light, trying to say that he will run off with all the money. I, I don't know. That's kind of the main thing people say is that, oh, he's a scammer. Why? Oh, because he wants all the money for himself. And it's like, well, he's never sold a coin after four years. If anything, he's only bought coins. Uh, I don't know how many more years you have to go on for and survive before people change their mind. But you know, we've seen a lot of people change their mind after Hex went up 10,000 X, a lot of them decided to get into Pulse Chain and Pulse X because they thought round two, great, let's do it all over again. And that was the messaging for a long time. I mean, of course, Pulse Chain was delayed and then it's been a year of suppressed prices due to SEC FUD, due to general bear market sentiment as well. And the, the DeFi narratives, I guess, haven't caught fire yet because everyone's playing in meme coin land. But I still think it's still primed to pump. Like we've got all the right puzzle pieces in place. We're going to get uh, coast back. We're going to get our fiat on ramp back. And that's going to allow people to onboard very much more simply than using the bridge and not have to pay the gas fee for using the bridge. So, and the more things we have like that, the more we can promote them in different ways. And like, look, even, even MEXC, right? It could be looked at as just a, an on and off ramp only. Like you could use it for that sole purpose and maybe be okay. So, um, yeah, no, I got into the whole thing to, I guess, defend my bags when I saw mainstream crypto just being so against it. I don't know if I would have done anything at all publicly if it was received like every other DeFi protocol. Like if it was one of the, the good old boys like Ave and Compound and all, Maker, um, it, it just hex was never part of that club, even though it was effectively just, just as good of an innovation, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's it, man, especially the early days. Again, I, I was I was watching, I was passive, I was watching from afar. A lot of you guys and, and Richard and stuff too in the early years, even though I've been following forever. I wasn't active until the past couple of years or so. But I, I'd seen from you know 
just so many things come and go. So many just dumb arguments. So many people just make, like you said, making stuff up, just having bad faith arguments and everything else. Yeah. And that was the time when Richard's like, all right, bring it, bring him in. Let's talk about it. And they're just crushing people over and over <clears> and over. And some of them learned and some of them didn't. And it's, he is a literal master debater. Like I, I think that's what I miss the most is like seeing him, even when he gets back into a corner where it's like, okay, man, how are you going to, Come on, they have a good point. He'll be like, "Nope, nope, I, it's not happening. We're gonna, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna." So it's just amazing to see that. Even that's great at language. He's great at. Um, something. Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say he'll say something. I, I'm like, dude, I don't even think I agree with that, but he'll like make it make sense for everyone else, and it, it's it's kind of beautiful to watch. That's um, that's what debate is. I mean, I, I wonder if he was on debate club in high school or something because I know he spent time doing NLP, natural language pro programming processing there's one that's a computer science and there's one that's like actually about manipulating people with language um yeah. there if you're in a debate like one thing they'll do in debate clubs is they'll force you to take a side you don't agree with and use facts and logic to defend that side as best as you can so um you know the, the truth really is just the facts plus the belief in the facts and the presentation that they're delivered in so he's an expert at you know, glass half full. I mean, he really is optim. I'm, I'm an optimist as well. A lot of people that we've seen so far have been dropping off. Typically, are are high, highly pessimistic or doubtful anyway. Whereas, I think if you want to see something work out on a truly grand level, you've got to stick with it for a couple of years. You've got to get into something and and really stand by it and see it through, and not just bail after six months or even a year, right? Because uh, we'll admit defeat when we've gone through an entire cycle and nothing happened. Like that's when I'll be saying, okay, maybe it's time for me to move on, but I'm going to try for a couple. I got a couple of years in me to try to do my best. And I know he's out there doing his best trying to, you know, protect uh, all of crypto from the sec trying to, well, we assume he's trying to do things for the ecosystem, even though we shall have no expectations. I'm pretty sure he's not sitting around playing video games all day. That's just, uh, I'll just say that yeah. he might be eating some Arby's once in a while, but no, no, no video games for Richard anymore. He's just, uh, I think he's chosen the, his video game to be his crypto projects. Arby's is objectively delicious in many different verticals. I haven't had it in a while. I wouldn't mind uh, trying it again. I, I just had Burger King though. Check it out. Oh man. The, the oh. king, baby. We're supposed to turn this into a why you shouldn't have fast food and coffee's like, you know what? Let me, let's do this. Let's do this one. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it is, it is good food. I'm not sure if they put enough, you know, squirrels or, or rabbits and stuff in that stuff to, to, I don't know how they make it taste so good, but boy, it's uh, yeah. they, they do something. Uh, but just to the, uh, I want to go back it's to the that, point where that squirrel meat for sure. <laughs> they season it so well. They, uh, they just, yeah. you know what? It's cheaper. So, you know, why not? I mean, it's, it's, it's for the shareholders coffee. It's for the shareholders. Oh yeah. Hey, if you um, never had squirrel, don't bash until you try it um red squirrels in the chat like come on come on i'm bleeding over here man i'm bleeding um just just i want to riff on your point too just about uh sticking with it for a while and that is the hardest thing i've seen anyone be able to do is just have a positive optimistic outlook and even recently with you know i, I saw you putting in the work and and buck and a few other people doing you know for the exchange stuff for mexi and then what do you see like two or three days later richard's like in all these like shadow like all these indirect ways hey guys are you you know like suspicious of exchanges and and out you know outright being like hey i mean the way i interpret it was like okay here not that you want to rethink it but like here's here's another perspective and like here's what i think about this stuff let me remind you about all these different positions it, in a in the best most constructive way i can i can say it i guess so a lot of people took that as hey stop doing that some people took it as hey I guess that's why I'm asking you, how did you, so a lot of people doing stuff like that, putting their time and energy into projects where they, they first of all, you got to believe it's useful and you want to do it. And and then the founder's like, eh, I don't know. Are, is that the right thing? You know, that kind of thing. How did you, how do you overcome that? Or are you still pissed about it? <laughs> I, I was not ever really that angry about it. I was like reading through, I'm like, I knew, I figured he would have those thoughts. I figured he'd say that he's correct about a lot of things. But I just figure, why not try something? And by the way, I'm not trying to like fleece all the community. I'm in my mind, it's like we've got several projects that raise many millions of dollars. So for them to chuck a few thousand dollars at a one hundred twenty three thousand dollar digital billboard, so to speak, um, I didn't think that'd be too much to ask. And so I'm primarily asking whales and people that have already made it. 
I'll let look. I'll float the idea out there again after we get a price pump, but I just feel like a lot of people that raise money would have not an, not a huge issue with it. Now I'm starting to find that, you know, partially just because some people will agree with everything Richard says, no matter what. And partially just because some people um, may maybe have an issue with the other, the president of the, the foundation, or they just don't know him well enough yet. They're hesitant to give money, even though it's to a multi-sig address, even though, you know, if like we don't really have much more than our word that, hey, we're not going to steal this money. <laughs> like We're just going to give it right over to MEXC and do what we said we were going to do. Um, you know, if, if I haven't built enough rapport yet with people, then maybe I just need to do some more work on that side. Um, now, now that said, I still don't think people should use it. And I, I've been explaining the nuance in all of my tweets of, yes, they might retract the offer. Yes, they could get busted by the SEC themselves, like, like we saw with KuCoin today. Yes, we, we might be humbled and reminded why crypto was invented in the first place. But, but you know, it's to have one, one exchange to hopefully just be a part of the... Look, and I get it. Like, it's, it's ego-driven as well. Like, if, they, if they've said no and rejected us before, it's almost like, wow, they shouldn't even... They don't even deserve our greatness or we shouldn't be sucking middleman D. It's like, I'm not like, if anything, I'll be, if, I've heard if, that phrase for a while. I always if this listing right. gets approved, like the only thing I'll be telling people to do is get off of MEXC. Like I'm not doing any more marketing for, for them. Like this is going to be a one way street. You know what I mean? If, yeah. if you want to use MEXC as an on-ramp, if you live in Asia, it's also an Asian exchange. So there's a lot of the world that uh, doesn't speak English that would be exposed to this new L L1 token. A lot of money in over in Asia. It's run by Koreans and Singaporeans. But this is also not the hill I want to die on. Look, if, if we don't raise enough and if that decides to be something that people don't want, then we'll pivot. We'll just go back to, I don't know, sending postcards or which I do think are effective, you know, or we can use the money in a lot of other creative ways as marketing expenses, right? We, but we haven't even gotten halfway there yet. So let's cross that bridge when we get there. Let's get one exchange and hopefully, you know, they don't beat us down again. Hopefully CMC and CoinGecko don't move the goalposts again. Because another thing is, you know, their current reasoning for not listing us on the homepage is, well, you don't have enough centralized exchanges. So it's, it's middlemen telling you that you don't have enough middlemen to be on their middleman site. So, you know, it's, it's not like I wanted to do this huge valiant effort. I thought it would be a simple thing to do, <laughs> but I guess nothing, nothing uh, you do is ever easy in, in crypto or, or life in general, right? You're going to be met with a lot of opposition. So uh, no. it's just not like this. I wouldn't be that upset if the market decided, quote unquote, that we didn't, that it was a terrible idea. I wouldn't be that upset. I'd be like, all right, I guess nobody wants that. Let's, let's do something the community wants. But I'd venture to guess that maybe 70%, uh, maybe I should take a poll on Twitter. I'd say over 50% of people would rather see some, something than nothing. I, I Dude, would just say that. Great idea. Poll's a great idea. I, I just want to say that. I think, no, and, and just to, dude, the character you're showing, again, this is what I wanted to demonstrate. Even when, when I read it, what, you know, what Richard said, uh, my heart kind of went out, like, man, there's people in here, you know, even with the NASCAR stuff a long time ago, right? This is the thing, I, I'm not, a fa like, I'm not personally offended. Like, no one needs to be offended for me. Like, it's, we have to understand his point too. And you have to realize that we can have two things be true. We can be trying to do this relatively small marketing effort, which is what I seriously view it as. And at the same time, we can say centralized exchanges suck, don't use them. Or use them as an on-ramp and off-ramp only. And hey, by the way, maybe some Asians will get on board that we didn't have before. So, yeah, no, exactly. I think that, that's... I. <clears throat> When I, when I read the tweet again, I was like, oh man, I know there's a lot of people working hard on, on this stuff. Even when the EHEX PX stuff, I was like, man, I know there's a lot of builders who have been building, Maxwell's guys, for example, yeah. have been building this stuff in the direction they thought was good, trying to help the community, trying to improve things, trying to go do the work. Yeah. And then, and, and it's not like I had some, I was like, oh man, all right, I, I don't like Richard today. Like Richard sucks. It wasn't like that. It was just like, man, I, I, uh, it, it's just, it's just tough. It's like you, you, you don't want to, I know what, I know what I kind of, I speculate. I try to think of like what his perspective to a lot of these things. He wants to teach us things. He wants to like wield influence from time to time, but he also wants us to go and do the work. So when it happens, it's like, man, I wish it would happen less, but I'm so 
it's so refreshing to see the response. It's like, you weren't mad. You weren't like, you weren't probably, I mean, maybe you're like a little frustrated. Oh man, I'm trying to do this thing or whatever. I was more frustrated because but- I, I knew how all, a lot of the, uh, let's, let's call them uh, more simple minded friends out there on Twitter would behave. They would say, Oh, Richard says bad. And then like polarize good and bad. You know? changes. Kind of like they did with the whole e-hex thing. Like they didn't have to dump their e-hex when Richard said e-hex is not as good and hex, p-hex is the real hex. They had six or eight months to do, to dump their e-hex, but if the tweet made him do it, it's it's on both people. Yeah, could have Richard have softened up the tweet? Sure. Or reworded it? Sure. But like, did somebody did somebody have to read the tweet and say, Richard said I should sell my e-hex? Like, not necessarily. Yeah. Ehex had been under Phex for many, many months. It was a good reminder for me to stop shilling ETH exchanges. Like I was, you know, I talked about like, like because people were talking about BankX and I'm trying to like dispel all this BankX FUD. And I'm like, look guys, BankX FUD is not that bad. It's all how you frame it. I should not have even been shining a light on that. Right. So there's things that uh, Richard's tweet in light uh, made me realize, right? Like about how I can pivot my actions going forward. And so that's what I'm going to do. And I tell people that's what I'm going to do. And uh, not everything has to be this giant pissing match on Twitter of dying on every little single hill that comes your way. Like, oh, let's, let's try, let's, we got to think bigger does. picture here. You know? There will be equal number of people who uh, have said, you know, Richard flooded exchanges, an exchange initiative. And there'll be equal number of people say that versus why are these, I thought we're real DeFi. Why, why do you want, why don't we need central exchanges? Hex never needed it. There'll be equal number mm-hmm. of people taking those strong, again, hill I'm going to die on positions. But there is this middle ground there. I talked about the other day on a stream of, of this, you know, uh, I was talking to Donovan and and uh, he asked me about like, what do I think? And my my only reaction I've had uh, that I've, when I've talked about it has been back to first principles. If the ideal is to get the middleman people who we can't reason with in any other way to have some data, which they say they need or have said they need, or, or there's a, a, a estimated guess that they would, be able to use this in order to properly rank us on those sites so we have no effect and no other way to affect otherwise that could whether we're trying to onboard people or not through it you know i don't think a lot of air people are going to use it i think it's the other way around like it's not like all people using DeFi are going to go use that exchange it's probably gonna be many more people using that exchange that come into DeFi. so yeah, i can yeah. totally make a case for the benefits for this I, like i get but again you said you can hold both thoughts you can have we want to get away from centralized stuff but also this would be really good for marketing and branding and for onboarding. Like you can have, you can have uh, both. I'd like it to be a one-way diode where people find out about DeFi through where they're already at. People are clearly already at these places. People are clearly degening and thinking that all of crypto is just centralized exchanges. They don't even know that there's a better way and they won't know unless maybe Pulse Chain is right in front of their face. And then they maybe watch a video, maybe they get some brand exposure. Um, I see Yoden in the chat there. What's up, Yoden? Good to see you. He's got a, a question. Don't pull it up. Don't pull it up. It's just um, I want to be. Ve- I want to warn you all about that particular one. Uh, that particular wallet. Uh, there's a reason I, I I've been ghosting it, and they've been a, very, a little suspicious. So I don't want to scare anybody, but I'm not using it, and I've just seen enough from them to make me very suspicious. That's all I'll say. So um, unfortunately, it's not a uh, you know. I, I, I wanted to assume the best intentions with that particular project, but I have not seen anything that has made me <laughs> favorable uh, for it. I, it's mm. sketchy. It's sketchy, bro. It's fuck. It's sketchy. Um, and I can, t- if you want to DM me, I can tell you why, but anyway, um, what else we got out there? We have coin showing. Who want to uh, wants to come to the PNW next Hex meetup on? Sounds like uh, news to me. September seventh. I, I didn't know what the date was. Summer Pacific Barbecue Northwest. Man. I invited you last year. How many times are you going to ghost us, man? How many times are you going to ghost us up here? I love. You have the best Washington. summers in the world. Best summers. I love. In the world. I love the Upper Peninsula. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. It's like there's nothing else quite like it in the entire USA. But I live in Puerto Rico. <laughs> it's it's uh there's no direct flights oh. there. It's an eight hour trip for me. Oh, are you um, actually in Puerto Rico? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. I thought you were uh, still Oh, sorry. It's north. okay. Um, but anyway, um, I, I will I will probably be in Chicago around summertime, maybe. So uh, I, I suppose, I, I you know, if I'm in Chicago, let me know about it. And okay. that, that'll be a one-way direct flight, hopefully. And maybe I can actually make it. Because I would love to. I'd chance. love to. There's a chance. There you go. 
yesterday you said tomorrow, but that's today. Just do it, the Shia LaBeouf <laughs> meme. <laughs> it's so universal. I love. It. I, I have the. I got the video produced of Richard doing it uh, with a pulse in the background. Uh, I'll, I mean, I'll pull it up in a second. It's pretty funny. But the Shia LaBeouf memes are just universally uh, amazing. And, and uh, so, oh yeah, so good. Just buy more hex. <laughs> yeah, just do it. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, we so we talked about yeah we talked a little, we already hit a couple of the points I want to hit at too but um, funny enough the dates this year January sixth we're taking it back man we're taking it back January sixth is now Pulse Chain Pump Day that's uh, when we first saw on the charts that our magnificent whales started buying um, and the whole ecosystem started uh, what people have called it an uptrend of of some way and then March tenth another date to remember is when uh, RH said that he's done promoting uh, Hex on Ethereum and he wants everyone to come to Pulse Chain. We're in March, let's see, March 26th today. What do you think of next, you know, April? I've talked about April a lot, a lot of different events happening, Bitcoin happening. We're projected to hit a million, um, a million wallets, active wallets on Pulse Chain. Um, you know, we got uh, Richard's SEC update and stuff coming up. What do you see any upcoming uh, times where you think we'll, we'll see some more big events, positive or negative? I think we'll just see, look, I don't know. Wait, do, do I think there's going to be more positive events in the future? Pump my bags. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yes, this, this summer or otherwise. Like, what do you what do you think? Uh, do you think we'll see like some other either crazy good or or just some big event happening in Eric's system or in crypto? Like, what do you? I guess what are you looking forward to? Well, the Ethereum ETF is what I'm looking forward to. That'll pump Ethereum, and a lot of that money that maybe people do rush into ETH with can be easily converted to other DeFi, right? Other DeFi meaning. Pulse chain, obviously, hop across the bridge and everything. Um, I'm sorry, I actually have to do one thing. Can you can you give me like five minutes and I'll be right back? Go for it, man. No worries. Thank you. Sorry. Stall for time. <laughs> I have plenty of stuff to talk about. Uh, let me just go say hi to the chat. We got a few. We skipped around a little bit. I had some. I had some set questions here to go through. And coffee's just he's too. Uh, He's too good at talking. We uh we already got through a couple. The thing. What what do you guys as far as hex goes? <laughs> Wake dog. I'm not gonna post it, but that's funny. Um, when you get the feeling. Uh, what, as far as hex and stuff goes, what do you guys? Uh, what would you like to pick the brains of, of people who've been around for a while? You know, I, again, I've been following Richard since uh for since 2017. Um, uh, have been active the last couple of years or so. That's why you haven't seen content and stuff like that interaction with the community. Coffee's been around for, I want to say, around Hex launch or a little bit before, maybe, um, as far as uh, being involved in the community. So, like, super involved, active, public for the last at least four years, I'll say four or five years. So, are there any like burning questions? Because I have a couple other ones I'm going to go through too, and we're going to wrap it up at around probably about 15, 20 minutes. But is there, is there things that you're wondering about in the ecosystem? Again, feel free to ask them, no stupid questions. Um, unless they're like literally troll questions or otherwise, but um, I'm going to continue on to uh, talk about, yeah, just keep it hex related. Um, we'll talk about a little bit of Hedron stuff as well. I think uh, those products, but um, yeah, I got a couple other things to get through too. But if you guys have any questions, get them in because we're only going for another 20 minutes max. I'll say. Whenever. I'm back. He's back. Fastest uh, dog walk ever, man. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a small dog. They it's were kind of chucking him across the room. Like, hey, walk yourself. Ah, okay, <laughs> AI, do it. Um, question from uh, Devin here: How do you stay positive with all the fud? How do I stay positive with all the fud? I mean, you, you, look, it's all again, it's all what you shine the light on, right? If you give that fud more attention, like if you feed it, it becomes this big giant boogeyman in your mind of oh, we're never gonna make it, right? If you just focus on the end goal of, let's say, imagine a dollar hex, imagine pulching at a penny. Um, these things are possible given the, the previous history of cryptos. Shittier stuff has pumped harder, you know? So to give some conservative hundreds of X's estimates in crypto, it's very possible. When you look at the infrastructure and the community and the game theory, the pumpamental dynamics with the buy and burn, the world's largest airdrop, the hex staking system, you've got like the supply side things programmed and you've got the the game theory tokenomics programmed in and now you just got it's a matter of pushing the message out there and again if you focus on every meme coin that's pumping that you forget that you missed out on you're gonna have a bad time 
And yes, you, if, if, if you want to diversify outside of Richard Hardy ecosystem, go ahead. If that's going to help you sleep at night too. Um, you just, I don't know. I, I don't get involved with silly little Twitter drama that happens from day to day because that's not the best use of anyone's time, right? To try to get mad at somebody for maybe whatever, whatever it is, their unique approach on onboarding or their unique grift. It's everyone. Everything's a grift nowadays. If it's something talk about my coin, know, bro, I got a, I got a coin. You need to talk about it. Stop gatekeeping me. Talk yeah, about it. Yeah. The, the word grift is very in vogue. And so, you know, if you want to look at everything like that, or, or it's, a, you know, assume the worst in people and take glass half empty pessimistic, pessimistic approach. I think every successful person I've ever met has been optimistic and hardworking and driven. And so that beats, it doesn't mean you're happy all the time. It doesn't mean like I, it doesn't mean I wake up like, in constant orgasm state every day or almost ever, <laughs> but, uh, you have a pill to sell us coffee. You have a pill to sell us today. You, you can be optimistic and still probably suffer for a lot for, for, I don't know, the majority of your life and not suffer in a negative way, but like suffering as in moving towards your goal, because the goal, the progress towards the goal has to be the reward itself. Cause that's all you really have to do. If you achieve your goal, like we achieved a 10,000 X in hacks, right? I was, I was like, you know, that internet meme where he's looking at the computer and then he holds up a sparkler for one frame and then he puts it right back down, mm. <laughs> you know, it's just like, mm -hmm. yeah, we were high and maybe it did last. The high did last maybe a couple of weeks, let's say. Yeah, we're all rich. Woohoo. But then you're like, okay, what now? What now? What now? It fades away. And so the, the, the ironic thing about everything in life, like whatever you choose to do is that there's no happiness. Like there's no state of you're just happy all the time. Cause how would you know happiness if you weren't sad or, you know, not happy, not saying you have to be sad. Right. But if you, how would you know what, if you were happy, if you, know you weren't, mean. if you weren't not happy at most other times. So it's yeah. these fleeting moments that we're all chasing and thinking that it's supposed to be a permanent moment. There's no, there's no permanence I think in life at all. So you can stay positive, but it's, it's still going to suck. Like I, I make videos all the time and I'm just like, damn, I'm making the same video uh, for the third time. But if I frame it in an optimistic way, I could say, well, those we previous times were shittier. And now I, this video is my opportunity to make it better than the last two times. So the previous or two times weren't like a waste of a video. The previous two times were getting me to become a better orator or ex ex explainer. And now I've maybe hopefully gotten closer to being great at something, which I'm still nowhere near, by the way. I'm not that old yet, but I also, I need to like, I'm inherently lazy too. I need to work on learning how to, how to do work. <laughs> I need to work on learning how to put in effort because that, that putting an effort thing is like a muscle that not a lot of us ever, ever learn. How many people just waste their life playing video games? I mean, Richard did that till he was in his thirties. Like he, <laughs> didn't he? So, I mean, yeah. he, he speaks from experience on that too. Um, I've wasted a lot of time just you know, doing dumb stuff. And, uh, I think when you look back on how you spent your day, if you spent your day working towards a goal, even if you weren't happy or always positive, if you were optimistic and, uh, you, you were effective then you can look back and say that was a good day. And when you compound like six months of that together, you can look back and say, dang, I came a long way. I'm actually kind of proud of myself. And this might be a more male oriented thing too. I don't know if females are necessarily the same way, but like mm -hmm. men are valuable when they, when they work, like when they are, we're valuable when we provide value to other people or when we're useful. So, uh, we're needed even. Yeah. Yeah. We need to be needed and that's okay. That's just how society functions. And maybe that's the whole lesson of why we're put on this life in general. Maybe our fifth dimensional self in like the interdimensional realm of love is like casting a shadow back into the third dimension and being like, this is what you're supposed to do. And we're lucky that we're actually here to be able to do that. I mean, if you got food on the table and like all your basic Maslow's needs met, you're just working towards self-actualization. And that's just um, picking something and I guess running with it. I'm giving you my limited experience of the world so far. So I'm not pretending to have all the answers, but um yeah, F oh. FUD is almost, just, it becomes funny too. It becomes like when you go on Twitter every day and it's like incessant arguing, oh, it's always something new. Someone's always got a terrible take and, uh, you know, 
a conspiracy theory about why this will never work. You can either I, go along with that misery loves company, or you can try to prove them wrong and go for the greater goal. How do you, do you curate your, I'm just curious too. Like, I mean, I'm sure this question a lot of people are just trying or struggling with, with, with Twitter and stuff. I've, I started curating my feed a lot more. Um, and you know, just, just trimming down my follow, my follow, my people I follow, I guess I say followers following, um, and stuff like that, just to be less distracted. Cause I'm like, man, there's all this stuff I see all these muted work. Like, how do I get away? How do I like just concentrate? How do I be able to look at my feed, get the good information that I want and then use that to again, bring it to other people or go act upon it in some way. Mm -hmm. Is there, is there certain things you do with your feed on, or in YouTube? Do you just ignore comments? Like how, do, how do you deal with like, I don't, I don't not, block not, anybody. Mm -hmm. I don't ever use the block button because I like to imagine like salty haters just squirming and trying to get my attention and me just not seeing it. But I, I don't like to block people because you know how, how petty people are when they're like, they, they post a picture of like, oh, oh this guy blocked me. What an idiot. And it's like, I've got some the truth. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, you don't, you're just going to mute everyone that shows you the truth. And it's like, no, you know, I'm, I'm muting you because you've never said a nice thing about anybody ever. <laughs> like when you scroll through and it's like, if, if you can't get these energy vampires more attention, that's all they want. So if they want you to fail or they don't believe, they still don't believe that's okay. But we do. And so that, you know, you might as well associate yourself with people that are at least, at least superior opponents. Like if there were better people, like not saying stuff other than, you know, you're retarded. <laughs> like, like if there was like an actual, like, I, I actually do read the counterpoints to a lot of things as well. Sami is a good example of the, the mirror, right? He'll tell you, Hey, look at what it, look at what this looks like from most people's perspective, you know? And you're like, yeah, that sucks. But like, that's just a summation of, of the negative mindset. Fast Abdul, I will block all of you. <laughs> no, that's, that's a good point on Sami too. Like, uh, I, I, I think his, his work and what he's done for the community is invaluable. Like I appreciate him so much. And, but there's so many, so many videos he does or things he'll say in the videos or positions he'll take. I just don't agree. And, I, or I don't think they're, they're not like a positive way of looking at it. They're not this op, there's not this, they're not feeding they're not taking it and feeding it in a way that's like gonna gonna help people think better about a product or whatever. But I, I want to hear it, just like you said to like, I want to hear that, and I want to be okay. That's that's a good you know reality check. That's a good that's that's definitely a way to keep outside the echo chamber. It's like here get a get perspective what other people are looking at and thinking. But oh yeah, he's absolutely, he's absolutely essential. But you know he can sum yeah. up. He has an ability to do something like a very unique role, right? To to keep his finger on the pulse of the sentiment of almost all of crypto. I don't know anyone that's got their ear to the ground more than Sami does. Yeah. Right. And he's okay with it too. Like he doesn't, I don't, I hope it's not like destroying him internally. Like he seems to be, be like going strong, like a warrior, like nonstop. We all, we all go give well wishes to Sami. Yeah. We, yeah. I hope he's not overworking himself, but he seems like he's doing what he, he, he chose. He chose his goal, which is like, I don't know, let's say I'm going to make three videos a day for the entire bear market. And when it, when all this pumps, everyone, I'm, it's going to be the glory and all the riches. And I, you know, I think it's going to work out for him. I really, I'm, I'm rooting for him, I'm rooting for all of us, obviously. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think that when, when he's got that goal of this, this is, this is what I do. And yes, I'm looking at all the, the sucky negative comments and I'm exposing them to everybody, but he's not letting it get to him because he's, he's still, look, he hasn't capitulated. So yeah. a lot yeah. of us are in the same boat of either this thing works out or we'll just try our best. And if it doesn't work out, at least we tried because even if, even if it only did a 10 X beats the hell out of doing almost anything else, almost anything else, even starting a business, you'd probably waste more time and energy starting a business to get less than a 10 X. And yet here we are crying that we didn't get a thousand X in Floki Enu. So perspective. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just one more point on Sami too, I think is it's important because I, I watch his content probably and his tweets and his perspectives and i clip his content a lot too i very listen i hear i don't want to say because i want to make a point about listening i i consume his content probably more than just about anyone else in the community at this point like he's he's right he may be number one and he got a few other ones uh you know not far behind but i don't it's not i don't listen i don't consume his content to listen to him though i consume his content to get information so if, you know, if some people say, oh, he's bearish one week and bullish this week, he'll make a video about people saying that. And I'm like, oh, it's really funny. But 
is I think it's because people are listening to him. Like you don't need to listen to someone. You don't need to be like, oh, that's a position. I should go do that because that's great advice, even though you know he's not giving advice and all that's either, what but, a lot of people do is they they listen to the video and that they let the video do the thinking for them. Yeah, I go there for information and then I decide. I say, okay, that's his position. Okay, do I agree with her or don't I? It's totally fine either way, but I'm glad he's given me information. And I super appreciate, infinitely appreciate Somi and what he does, even when I don't agree with his positions. I agree with most of them, though. I think he's got a lot of great takes. But, uh, yeah. And if, if you're listening, I mean, you crazy, crazy Australian, <laughs> keep it up, bro. Keep it up. Uh, nobody <laughs> works harder than uh, that guy at, at social media right now. You going to send him at one ETH one day? One, one day? Come? Fuck yeah, I'll send him one ETH. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe if, we, if we get to the top, why not? Maybe five ETH. I think he, yeah. he deserves it, man. He's putting in the work. Yeah. Um. One other question before we wrap up here in just a few minutes too, though, but I, I think the one question, there's a couple in the chat. I can't get to all of them today, everyone, but I wanted to cover this before we go and, and we'll, we'll talk about briefly talk about Hedron and, and, and stuff coming too, because I'm very excited about that. But, you know, I think the one thing on people's mind, again, this is hex unaffected. I, I want to keep it to this like concise, not always fun, but good information type of conversation. A lot of people criticize hex for the price dropping so much in the bear market you know down like ehex for example down 98 percent, 99 percent, whatever has has the way you looked at it changed as far as store value or how do you reconcile the two you know we, we've heard somebody's position on it before too we've heard, heard a lot of people talk about it, the haters and otherwise how do you think about hex as a store value or do you think it's coming back after these moves with all that or has it changed that's at that, all that's a great question right i mean time will tell if these things did store value in retrospect Imagine a world where Hex is back just at all-time highs. Like, let's say Hex goes back to 50 cents, okay? Then you could combine, you could put the chart together, even if you don't count eHex, right? You could say, here's where eHex stopped, here's where pHex began. And everyone got their copies, so let's just say everyone's back at 50 cents. There is literally nowhere on the chart in, the in this future scenario where you would have been able to buy and not have been in profit. So the narrative changes almost overnight. So it's been a bad store of value for the last two years, but it, it's been a good store of value if you bought in the first year. So mm -hmm. store of value over long enough time frames, I think it's too quick to call it after four years. And yes, it had four years is a long time. It's significant in crypto, but I think we need another cycle to fully play out before we can call it like an actual, like it hasn't stored value. Like I think people, if they wanted to be accurate, they would say, well, it hasn't stored value anytime lately. It's absolutely true. You know, I've got stable coins and even Ethereum that have like held up a bit better, right? Well, you could break down even value into a way it's like, has it kept you from participating in other projects where you would have lost your money? I think that's, that's a great point. Rate. It's yeah. definitely stored my value that would have been lost completely in FTX, in Celsius. And I'm still up actually, I don't know, maybe a hundred X maybe less, maybe some, some double digit X's. I'm still up just because I was lucky enough to get in in that first year. Right. Yeah. But I do feel for people like it's okay. Like I understand when people bought the top and uh, didn't dollar cost average on the way down, but you also could have dollar cost average on the way down. I know people that did that bought a lot under a penny and that were actually break even because maybe they bought at 30 cents, but then they bought more at, at three pennies. Maybe they bought more at one penny. I don't know if anyone's actually break even now, but they're a lot closer. Like maybe their break even cost is like two pennies or three pennies rather than 30 cents where they originally got in. So that's another thing too. It's, I mean, if you believe in it, if you don't, a lot of people that we've seen that came just because the number went up a lot and they thought it was get rich quick. I think hopefully a lot of those people are gone and it's just true believers. Hopefully by the next time we pump. Yeah, I, I think this cycle could be the cycle where it becomes what it's meant to be. I really think with getting all the pulse chain stuff out of the way, as far as splitting and buying pressure and the stock split and copies and all that stuff too, a lot of stuff happened to Hex. I mean, I always remember when uh, Alex from Hedron went on with Sloth and was talking about how, because uh, Hex is paired to pulse a lot now and pulse kept going down. It's not like people were selling off Hex like crazy. It was just pulse was going down because I had a different thing it was paired to in, in hard slow and all that stuff. So I think Hex has got a, it's been hit with a bunch of, I won't say unfair, but it's like unusual things that have happened to it over the past year. So for long-term benefit, we hope, and, and that's what I imagine the founder has in mind as well. So I think this could be the cycle. Well, I mean, will we see 10,000 X again? I don't know, but like, will it store value? What can, 
I don't think I think you could pull everyone with could they rationally if Hex does another you know, 50, 100,000 X, whatever. If you polled people and asked them, do you think after that, do you think it would go down 99% again or 98% or 97, whatever it is? I think overwhelmingly people are like, no, no way. And it's not because it would be euphoric because it went up. It's because they, they if they understand the bigger picture, they'd be able to come to a better conclusion. Yeah. I mean, if you want to make it real simple, do you think Hex will ever break its previous all-time high? If yes, it's a great investment. It's an amazing investment right now because it's uh, I'm 95% right. away from that. If no, why would you even be holding it? Why? Go get Pulse and Pulse X. If you, those are the shiny new things that everyone likes. Get those. And hey, if they if they pump, it drags hacks up too. So I don't know. That trying to make it simple for people there. Yeah. Um, let's wrap up on this. Just got a few minutes left, but I wanted to I wanted to touch on Hedron, Maximus, different things building on hex. And I I, I think that Hedron B2 is one of the most exciting things this year coming up. I think all the stuff, I think hex would be wouldn't have as much flair going on without these builders building things that are just making it better and giving you more features, expansion packs, newer games to play, different leverage plays, uh, different ways to use it and, and, and just make everything better as a whole. I really appreciate the people building on it and making it more than just uh, lock up the token, get it back. We love the T-share theories and all that stuff too, but it's, it's just one of those things I love that people are building on it. And I think this year could be a big year, especially when we get some of the new products and we got pool party, all this stuff's out too, but how, how big a role do you think that people building on hex plays for not only locking up, you know, incentivizing five, 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 fives and locking up T shares and giving people newer and games to play that all tie back and benefit hex. But how important do you think uh, just the people in the community that are just diehard and will just not stop building on this thing? What does that say about hex and its future? Yeah, I think the expansion packs are cool. They're all very interesting. You've got pooled stakes. You've got wrapped slash tradable stakes as NFTs. And then you've got mintable T-share, I mean, uh, tokenized T-shares, which is a uh, com communis, right? <clears throat> These are all good. They all give people something else to do. I, I think, again, the emergent property of people staking for so long is that they, now that they're locked in, they turn some of their energy towards enhancing the original product itself. And I think these three expansion packs, you can call them. There's another one called stakehex.win. No, super stake. God damn it. It's, it's the magic carpet ride, guys. Okay. They've got another pooled staking. I don't know. That one might might be better. I have no idea until it, until it launches. Um, people can pool their stakes to get more yield and maybe gas fee savings. Uh, people can wrap their stakes to trade them on a secondary, almost like a bond market. And then people can also play with um, tokenized shares to try to equate that somehow to the... Uh, the underlying price, the, the underlying scarcity of the shares of the shares in the share system. Yeah, MCR three six nine. That's right, Fast Abdul. Um, what are my thoughts about it? Like, it's just nice. It's just that that's what you get when you have people locked in a system. Like the emergent properties that they work for, the system that they're locked in. It's like they're aligned to make sure this thing is successful, and and a lot of them just again, I just want to. Nothing against sack faces, nothing against people raising money for stuff. I know that's necessary and and, it, and it's great. I just think there's something beautiful about seeing people again with, with Hedron and just Maximus has the two prime examples I use a lot of just either trading in tokens uh, to to get the to get the bond to get the tokens get other otherwise or uh, just getting airdrops from it or being able to mint from it or whatever and just having this again just like this true DeFi trustless system where you interact with the contract. There's somebody who wants to give you something if you if you want it if you want to receive it type of thing. And it just builds upon the whole ecosystem. And a lot of people, again, I mentioned when I started the stream, and I'll, uh, and I'll you know just just tie the end on this too. People who are giving back this ecosystem more than they take. Like I think cultivating those type of people and rewarding them, and again aligning incentives for this place to grow, and not just because everyone's like exiting at the right time. It's like building a place where people, again, you don't want to exit. You're like exiting means taking yield profits or something. It doesn't mean leaving. It just means like, Hey, uh, you know, I hope we get to a state where again, if, if Hex becomes the premier store value again and all that stuff with, with a new, new bull run and over time that you have more than enough to take and still, and still be able to, uh, you know, not affect the system and not just crush the price down all the time. I hope we're, we're, we get to a place where that's easy and accessible and, and everyone starts doing that. And again, just giving, 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 and hopefully, you know, again, don't count, but 
maybe if you pay it forward enough, you'll get something back. Yep. There's no certainty that this is all going to work out, but you can try to be a part of the future where or the timeline where it does work out. So uh, cheers to everybody that's working towards living on that timeline. What do you mean, man? I'm here to get rich in six months and get out. What's the best way to do that? What should I buy? Tell me the coin to buy coffee. Tell me the coin to buy. Oh, I can tell you. I, I can tell you some dirty old meme coins. I know a bunch <laughs> of guys here on the island. They're all make they're, that's all they're <laughs> that's all they're doing. They're whipping up memes. Wow. Now some of them are working hard uh, at it. Some of them not so much, but it's gotten oh. a hold of everybody, even the so-called smartest guys in the room. Well, hopefully at, in the end, the, the best ideals win, whatever they may be. I mean, in a meritocracy, we want the best best ideals and most most funded and uh, and, and things to, to win, I guess. So we'll see how it works out. I, I'm betting on Hex. I, I, yeah. I want that to be Hex. I want that to be the core coins uh, for, for the most part. But I think everyone, everyone, will everyone win? No. Can everyone win? Absolutely. That's why I'm in the secret system because I get a fair shot at winning. But you can't say that for most places, man. Yeah, yeah. So especially because we're chilling at the lows, but yeah, there's your da daily dose of copium. Everybody <laughs> believe in yourself that it's exactly right. Um, yeah. It's went from copium to hopium back to copium. Uh, hopefully we'll get to hopium again pretty soon. And then just make a quick U-turn to hexpassiveincome.com. Where can people find all your stuff, man? What, what's going yeah, on? Yeah. If you're brand new to Facebook? crypto, if you don't know anything about any of this, I don't know why you'd be watching this long, <laughs> but uh, go to hexpassiveincome.com. It's going to teach you everything you need to know from a very, very beginner in crypto. Um, it's better than get asking for consulting time from me. I don't do one-on-one -on -one calls, but this this course down here is just infinitely better than a one-on-one -on -one call if you're brand new. Most people watching, just spread the good word. Thanks for coming. You guys are all amazing people. I, I see everybody in the chat. I actually know almost all of them. Um, all good people here all with the right mindset. So we're all going to make it, guys. Let's keep working towards that vision. Wag me, baby. Wag me. Yes. I'll wag you if you wag me, bro. We'll wag each other. It'll be it'll be a great day. <laughs> wag wag waggy day. Waggy day. That's yeah. the next event. The next uh, great hex event is gonna we're gonna name it Wag Me Day. <laughs> actually, that's not a terrible name that's for pretty a green cool. candle. Wag day, me actually, day. Right? Right? Yeah. That sounds kind of cool. Yeah. I'm gonna sound like I want to do that. I you're gonna walk your dog on Wag Me Day. That sounds like a great, a great day to do it. Uh everyone, that's all we got for you today. Infotain coffee crypto coffee in the house for you gotta, it's got to be like your eighth appearance or so, man. We got to pump those numbers up. Got to get two more. That'll be lucky number ten, right? Mm -hmm. Always good to see you, and you too, uh, always bro. appreciate always appreciate everything you do. Great to catch up with you in Vegas again, and uh, you just literally released a video like thirty four minutes before even came on stream. So this guy's working hard, and do not forget how much coffee is given, and uh, we're looking forward to all the future stuff from you, man. See ya. All right, we're out. <laughs> five, 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 five. We are out.